Yes, this is module three. We're going to talk about mark time. You can have your standard mark time, which you use most uh, uniformly throughout the show, but also some of these mark times would be used for stylistic variations depending on the music and so forth. So we'll show you several different ones, and you can choose to use them uh, according to whatever uh, is happening stylistically with the music. So we'll start with, uh, first of all, uh, one of the more traditional type steps with it was used many years ago. Now, a lot, even a lot of the drum corps are using this step as a choreographic movement that's called chair step. There's many variations of the chair step depending on the tempo and style of the music. We'll start with the most, the most common chair step, which is basically putting the body in the position of a chair, which means the top part of the leg is parallel with the ground, and the bottom part of the leg is at a 90 degree angle and the toe is pointed down. An advantage of the chair step is the toe is the last thing to leave the ground and the first thing to come and touch the ground, which absorbs the shock, which means you can get a nice flashy movement and not have any jarring of the body. So we're gonna start with the teaching method for a standard chair step, which is we call toe up, toe down exercise. We start with our feet together, and I tell the students when we're learning marching steps, don't use the brackets, actually watch your feet so you can see if your feet are and your legs are accomplishing my goals. So the first thing we do is we peel the left heel off the ground until the toe is the, uh, touching ground. This shows that it's the toe is the last thing to leave the ground on these smart chair steps. And next, the up position, I want you to pretend like you have a string tied around your knee and you're lifting your knee and you're locking the hinge at your waist. And you simply bring the leg up until the bottom part of the leg is 90 degrees and your toe is pointed and your top part of your leg is parallel with the ground and then we go back to toe which demonstrates that the toe is the first thing to touch the ground okay first thing to leave the ground first thing to touch the ground and then we close the foot so the advantage of this is to avoid shock spend a lot of time on this until you get uniformity breaking it down into four parts let's try that toe up watch your feet toe down then the other foot Toe, up, toe, down. You notice how Stephen corrected his foot because he's watching and he saw his bottom leg was at 90 degrees. And that's the thing about going slow until you get uniformity and you need to have staff members going around and scanning your ensemble for differences and variations of this. It's important not to leave this four count process until the uniformity is there. And the important thing is getting the toe to leave the last thing and the first thing to touch the ground, absorb shock, and get the top part of the leg parallel with the ground, the bottom part of the leg 90 degrees. Okay, let's try it again. Starting with your left foot, toe up, toe down. Next foot, toe up, toe down. You remember, what you might have noticed is for the first time, uh, Stephen, he didn't have the toe down, and that's that what's gonna happen is if you land flat-footed, you're gonna get a shock. So we're trying to get uniformity on the toe touching the ground first to absorb the shock before we, it touches the ground. So let's try it again. Here we go. This is the standard chair step. Toe, up, toe, down. Okay, now, once they've mastered that, we're gonna combine toe up, toe down. Again, they can watch their feet, all right? Here we go, toe up, toe down, starting with left foot, toe up, Toe down, toe up, toe down, at ease. Now this time I'm gonna go a little faster and gradually transition into an actual mark time. Obviously when the leg is this high, it's harder to do it fast tempos, okay? Here we go, toe up, toe down, 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 and one, and two, and three, and four, and halt. So that's how I would transition from breaking down small parts into actually moving them. Now the beautiful thing about this step, it's very flashy. It shows the feet, but it's difficult to achieve uniformity and it's difficult to do at faster tempos. Now what we can do though, we can get the same step with the same flash on faster tempos by not picking the feet up so high off the ground. So in this case, the, the toe is only gonna come off the ground about three inches. 
and you teach it the same way, I'm going to skip toe up, toe down, and go right away to toe up, toe down. In this case, same step, except that the toe is only going to come about three inches off the ground. So again, I'll let you watch your feet. Ready? The foot toe up. Oh, it's just about three inches off the ground. There it is, close to the ground, toe down. Toe up. Piece are closer to the ground, closer to the ground, toe down. Toe up. There it is, toe down. And then I would gradually transition, speeding it up, we'll do that. And again, the advantage of this is it's easy to do. You still use the toe to leave the ground last and touch the ground first to pour, avoid, avoid shocking. What you don't want to do is land on the ground flat footed. Okay, let's try that exercise this time. I'll speed it up. Here we go. Toe up, watch your feet. Toe down. Toe up, 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 toe down. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and ease. And so you see, this is really good for like when the tumbles are really fast. And they're doing pretty well because I don't think either one of these ever did chair steps in their life. So they're, and so the teaching method is, is showing up really well. Now, when the music is very slow and very maestoso and majestic, and you want something really big, we call it the high chair. The difference here is the bottom part of the leg is 120 degrees angle instead of 90. Top part of the leg is still parallel to the ground, and we still do the same toe up, toe down exercise, only the up position now is defined with a leg at 100 and 120 degrees. Let's, talk, let's do that again. I'm going to let you watch your feet. Now, by the way, once we've learned the steps, then instead of watching their feet, we go back to the brackets to rehearse these steps once they've mastered it in, in the basic things, uh, fundamentals like we're doing right now. Okay, so watch your feet. We're going to go. Toe, up. Now here the leg is 120 degrees, top part parallel, toe, down. The toe down is important because it's absorbing shock. Toe, up, toe, down. Now this, believe it or not, is the easiest to teach of all the chair steps because it's easy to define it. It's really powerful looking and it's nice on maestoso, legato, and really powerful music and the tempo is real slow. And here's how we transition, just like before. We'll combine toe up, toe down, and accelerate. Toe, I'm sorry, toe up. Let's go back to tension. Here we go. Toe up, toe up, toe down, 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 toe up, toe down. And one, and two, and there it is. And you notice it's smooth, but you can also do it snappy. If the, mark, if the music's marcato or staccato, obviously we can make that more snappy in the movement. But those are beautiful steps to use as in choreographic and body movement variations depending on the style of the music. And obviously, with young bands, you need to stick to one type of step until they develop their fundamentals, and then little by little, uh, with all the concepts of body movement and modern day marching bands, some of these things can be added without a whole lot of effort if you teach them in the same way we just did. So basically that covers mark time and variations of the mark time. And I think that uh, if you use these teaching methods, the students can learn them real quick. Matter of fact, my stu two students here haven't even done a lot of these steps until we started demonstrating it for you here and look how quickly they learn them. So, although I have to admit, you know, Stephen was in the Boston Crusaders and has had a lot of marching experience, but not with some of these steps we're teaching, right? Yeah, it's a little, a little different. Yeah, okay. And, and this is pretty much unrehearsed, so it really does demonstrate these, these methods work with people that really are unfamiliar with some of these fundamentals. So that concludes our module on mark time.